Good evening from Los Angeles, California. I'm Dr. Ryan Ava. Last week, we reported on the guilty verdicts against two companies in the Trump Organization. A Manhattan jury convicted them of criminal tax fraud. The disgraced former president himself, however, did not face any charges in this case. But other investigations are in the pipeline, including one focusing on a hush money payment to a porn star, Stormy Daniels, who claims to have had an affair with the disgraced ex-president. This stems from the Manhattan District's attorney's broader criminal investigation looking into whether Trump used misleading asset valuation to defraud lenders. Here is a brief interview with Manhattan's district attorney, Alvin Bragg, where he explains more. So prosecutors during closing arguments in the Trump Organization case said that former President Trump knew about the scheme. So why wasn't he charged? I know you've been asked this before, but why wasn't he charged? Sure. So, you know, that 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 statement, which I thought was very ably made by uh, uh, ADA Josh Steinglass in closing statements, was in response to the defense's repeated sort of invocation of the former president's name and saying that this was, uh, you know, actions by rogue employees. Uh, and, and ADA Steinglass's response was, well, let's look who we're talking about, the CFO and other very senior officers um, who hired them. Who set this in motion? Who, in effect, sanctioned it? Uh, and so, for purposes of you know, corporate uh, liability, and I think the jury agree with him, those arguments were made in that context. Let me ask about um, efforts by former President Trump, when he was the head of the Trump Organization, to inflate the um, value of that company, uh, and uh, that was apparently something your predecessor was looking at. You decided not to look at it, according to reporting. That's something that the Attorney General of New York is looking at. So I wonder if now that you've been in the job a little bit longer and this other case has now had a verdict, um, might you be looking into that again, that idea of President, uh, former President Trump um, inflating the values of his uh, assets? I love how you said according to reporting. Uh, it's the way in my business we always say allegedly, yeah. uh, right, to, to, to caveat the, 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 the scope and the reach of the statement. So, look, we've consistently said that, as we did last week, we're going to do our talking in the courtroom. You know, I've been a prosecutor for 20 years. Uh, there's things that we do behind the scenes. We don't want to prejudice any investigation we'd bring. And so consistently sort of pointed people back to the statement in April, which is that we decided not to bring any charges at that time uh, so that we could continue our investigation, which is what we're doing. So door neither open nor shut. We're working. We're working every day. And I think people saw the fruits of that work uh, in trial last week. Uh, and when we have something to say, we'll do it in that Here's video. It's a question Matthew. I don't get. So the Trump Organization, you looked at their taxes and you said successfully, you said they weren't playing by the rules of, of taxes. You have President, former President Trump's personal taxes. It seems hard to believe that a company where the president, where, sorry, where the leader of the company knew that they were engaged in tax practices that were not legal would have pristine, crystal clear personal taxes. Is that a, that seems, that seems impossible that that would be the case. So, you know, we, we, are, we are investigating, and it's interesting because you started with a couple of things before that we're investigating, and now you've added to the list. This is, this, is, this is what we do in the office, right? This is what we do in complex uh, investigations. We go where the facts take us. Um, you know, it, it takes time, uh, and we don't want to prejudice any, any potential result uh, by speaking publicly. Uh, but we're, we're, we are following the facts wherever they take us. Speaking of complicated things, I wonder if you have any thoughts about the investigation into Sam Bankman Freed, just the sprawling nature of it, it, it. As somebody who has to take on sprawling investigations, what, what do you make of, of what uh, other prosecutors are going to have to do wading through all of this? You know, it's, it's an interesting question. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to comment sure. on my own investigations even more on someone else's. <laughs> just, just to say that I think you put the nail on the head, which is, you know, these kind of, you know, complex white collar investigations require you know, great personnel, which we have in the Manhattan DA's office, that require often a fair amount of time. Um, and following the trail of witnesses, documentary evidence, you know, often now um, you know, video and audio, emails, text messages, uh, and putting, a, as I say, the pieces of the puzzle together. To support my work, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to hit the bell icon so you wouldn't miss any of my new videos. Thanks for watching.